What is good, guys? Welcome back to Redacted, the world's greatest podcast. This podcast is literally going to fix the economy. We're going to fix the economy, okay? Well, actually, the economy doesn't have to be fixed. It's already booming because we have the best government in the world. So our economy is booming. If you walk outside, you'll see literally a shining example of a first world country. Everything is perfect. There's no crime. There's no pollution. There's no problems. Everyone's so civil. Everyone just agrees to disagree and has polite conversation. The economy is amazing. Jobs are booming. Everything is so cheap. You walk outside to the grocery store, everything's so damn cheap. You can just buy so many groceries without spending that much money. And gas is cheap. It's amazing. It's so good. It's so great out there economically. Um, but <laughs> so the Fed said, I saw this yesterday, the Federal Reserve said that uh, they there could be a chance of a recession in 2027. I was like, bro. The Federal Reserve needs to do stand-up comedy. <laughs> 2027, have they fucking looked outside? I know we have changed the dictionary definition of recession like six times since the start of the pandemic. No, that's not a recession. That's just what that's what we called a recession like 10 years ago. Oh, when there's two negative quarters in the stock market, you know, it's a recession. That, that definition was stupid. We don't really care about that one. We're going to make a new definition because... That uh, the last definition was uh, misogynistic. Yeah, that's right. The last definition of a recession was misogynistic. So the new one is this. So we're not in a recession at all. So jokes on you guys. Like, why are you guys complaining over there in your tent on the side of the road? Just shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> so yeah, audio should be a little bit better on this episode. It should be crispy. I think last time I was literally the audio was just coming straight directly from the phone. This microphone was not even doing anything. Um, as far as I know, switched out the coffee, got some ice water with some lemons in it, you know, squeeze the lemons in the ice water. This is the best fucking drink of all time. I don't even care at me, bro. Mm. What a fucking drink I got criticized in the last episode for not actually drinking my coffee. It just kind of stayed there the whole time. I was like, I don't want there to be a gap. Like, I don't want there to be a two second gap where I'm just fucking slurping on some coffee. I feel like I wasn't providing entertainment. However, now I realize this is long form. You guys are with me for the long haul. You can't escape. There's an hour of this or 40 minutes or 30 minutes or however much I do. So I don't think people will mind if I take a fucking sip. By the way, plastic straw. You'll never catch me with those, one of those fucking gay ass paper straws. Um, when I say gay, I don't mean homosexual. I just mean this gay ass straw. Like, fuck that straw. Um, so <laughs> you can't cancel me. That's that's how it works. Um, yeah, why do they... I saw this dude on like Twitter, this old man, and he was just kind of from New York, and he was just yelling. He's like, why do they give us the, the, the plastic straws? Okay, I get it. The climate, the environment... Why don't they give us the, but they give us the fucking coffee in a, they give me a paper straw in a fucking plastic cup. And I was like, this dude has a point. Why do they give you an iced coffee in a fucking plastic cup, but then a paper straw? Like the cup is bigger than the straw. So wouldn't they make it? He was like, then I can't fucking drink my coffee, my iced coffee. Why don't they give me a fucking coffee in a paper cup? With a plastic straw. I'm like, this dude has a point. Why don't they do it in a paper cup? If they gave you copy, coffee in a cardboard cup, you know those kind of cardboard to-go cups, and with a plastic straw, you can drink it. The cup isn't going to fucking disintegrate, but they give it to you in a plastic cup and a paper straw. They don't want you, liberals, far left, <laughs> they, they don't want you to enjoy your drink, bro. This sounds, this is a conspiracy now. They don't want you to enjoy your drink. I can't think of any other reason. Why do they want everything? It's like they want the worst experience. They want you to have no enjoyment in life, no fun. You can't fucking drive your car. Oh, you, you can't drive your car over here because the environment, uh, and you can't enjoy your drink. If you enjoy your drink, that's far right. You have to just suffer through your fucking drink and be as miserable as me because I'm ugly and fat and I hate my life every day. So I'm going to make everyone else, even good looking people, even fit people, you guys are going to have to fucking have the shitty life experience that I have. I'm going to make you drink through a fucked up straw just so you can experience the taste of my anguish every day going through life looking like this. Okay. That's what, why I think they do it. <laughs> anyway, um, you guys can see why it's, it's a little difficult for me to make small talk sometimes when I meet strangers. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, I do find that pretty difficult to pull off. Um, I feel like I was able to make small talk better when I was younger. Like now the older I get, I see why old people are just like, get off my lawn, like fuck off. You know, they don't have any patience anymore. Like, especially me, I'm the worst person for small talk because 
I don't have a job. I don't know what my job is. I don't have a job. I don't do anything necessarily. I've had these random amalgamations of fake jobs, the soccer influencer, you know, this, that, like, uh, NFT collector, <laughs> like the jobs just get worse and worse. Um, so like, I just struggle with small talk. You know, I meet someone, sometimes I wish I was just an accountant. Like, what do you do? I'm an accountant. And then people leave you alone and move on to the next question. Um, but it's really, it's tough for me to do small talk. People, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Like, I had uh, some money and then I bought Bored Apes and NFTs and then made some decent money with that. But I've been living off that and I've been doing pretty good and my life's good. But now that money is like running out and I'm, you know, don't really know where I'm going to get my next check from. So there's that. And then they're like, whoa, this guy's going into a mental breakdown, uh, <laughs> abort conversation. And I'm like, yeah, but you know what? It's all good. Like, you know, I'm I'm a big Kanye fan, you know, I like Kanye. And then they're just like, okay, get me out of here. Um, <laughs> like, and I don't have patience for small talk. I just don't have patience for it. Like people will just be like, oh, that's so nice. That's lovely. Yeah. You know, and during the pandemic, blah, blah, blah. and then I, in my head, I'm just like, if you knew what I thought about the pandemic, you would be moving tables. You would be sitting at the other end of this restaurant and you would probably be furiously having a fucking panic attack about my opinions about it. And I just have to sit there and be like, oh yeah, yeah, the pandemic, mm, I know, it was so bad. It's good that we all stayed safe, right? Um, so I just struggle, I struggle. I can't really be myself. I can't be myself in some of these conversations, especially in LA. When I lived in New York, people are a bit more blunt. I could just say whatever. In LA, people are like so scared. If you have a wrong opinion that has not been sanctioned by the thought police, people are so uneasy. Like if you just say some... Small thing. I'll, I'll tell you an example of how little it takes to make someone like uneasy in LA, right? If you if we're having a conversation in Europe, New York, South America, Asia, anywhere, and I go, you know what? I'm not really that political. Like I don't really give a fuck about the left. I don't really give a fuck about the right. I don't even really necessarily care. I don't really vote. Like they're all crazy, right? You say something like that in any country in the world, seventy percent of people will be like. To be fair, fully agree with you. They're all fucking shit. They're all uh, like corrupt wankers um, and no one cares, right? Like the guy, the guy has a point, you know? Okay, maybe I care a little bit more than that. That's a bit blase, but you know, he has, I see where he's coming from. You don't have to fucking believe left or right or one side. If you say that in Los Angeles, people look at you like you were storming the Capitol on January 6th. <laughs> Like, if you just say, if I say, you know what, honestly, I don't really give a fuck about Democrats or Republicans. Like they're all, they're all fucking weirdos. Like I don't even vote. Like I don't care. Like it's all the same shit. They literally look at you like you're like Mussolini meets Hitler meets like Trump's children. Like uh, they, they just can't, they just, they get like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God, babe. Like, can we move tables? This guy is like so right wing misogynist. It's like <laughs> people are insane. Um, so yeah, struggle making small talk. Um, don't know if you guys can relate, but yeah, that's insane, bro. My girlfriend got a fucking ticket yesterday. I'm going to take a sip of this water. <sighs> Maybe I got to sponsor these water breaks. Like every time I take a sip of water and there's just silence, <laughs> this sip of water is brought to you by Johnson & Johnson, the vaccine that you only had to take one time instead of two, and it still didn't work. But hey, you didn't have to come back twice. We just did it once. Um, so yeah, don't sue me, bro. Um, so yeah, my girlfriend, I'm reading some notes here. My girlfriend got a fucking ticket like for, this is the craziest ticket I've ever seen. I didn't even believe her. I thought she was kind of like lying. You know, when your girl's like, I don't know, like I did nothing wrong. They're just like crazy. I just got a ticket. And then you look and you're like, you were like double parked, like horizontally across like a red light with a fucking four lane intersection. Like, you know, but it wasn't the case. Uh, she actually was right. The ticket literally said on it did not turn your wheels. So she parked on a slight uphill thing, put her handbrake on, everything, but she didn't turn her wheels. You know the way, I don't know, they say you're supposed to turn your wheels towards the curb, like so that your car, if the brake fails, it won't roll right back down the hill. If the wheels are turned, it will kind of just roll into the curb and it won't go anywhere else. But like, it wasn't like fucking, she didn't park on the fucking, I don't know, like Mount Everest. She just parked on like a slight slope had the handbrake on. She got a fucking ticket for not turning the wheels. Dude, that's how broke our government is. It was $20 ticket as well, which I'm like, bro, is that even worth the government's time to hire the fucking like mall cop Karen that needs to drive around looking for shit to give a $20 ticket? Like 
I can't stand that shit, bro. It's like our government's so broke that they literally take the effort to nab you for not turning your wheels. But it's like if she fucking smoked crack and then carjacked like 10 people and then went on the subway and like slashed somebody in the face, they'd be like, hey, do you want like tickets to the Knicks game or the Dodgers game? Like, what do you need? You want you want a car? We'll give you a car. Like they treat criminals like victims and they treat regular everyday hardworking people like criminals. I hate it. It's like every, the war, the more crimes you commit, you get treated better in America these days. And even in a lot of the West, if you just commit a fucking crime rampage, they'll be like, Oh, we're so sorry. We kind of technically have to arrest you, but don't worry. We're just going to like release you the same day. And Hey, go ahead and just like assault people like the next day after you get out. And then maybe just grab your car, drive through a parade of kids and like kill seven people. And then like, you know, we'll get you again. We'll release you again. Just pay like a thousand dollar bail and we'll let you right back out. And we're really sorry. Like we promise we're not like bigots or anything. Like you just kind of technically committed like 17 crimes, but like, we're so sorry. Please don't think that I'm like right wing. Um, so, but if you're a hardworking citizen, you pay your fucking taxes and you literally, you know, you slightly like don't turn your wheels when you park or you, you know, accidentally one time you like go through a yellow that kind of just turned red a little too late, like a split second, then no, 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 all bets are off. We're fucking coming for you. We're going to make your life living hell. We're going to write you tickets. We're going to put it on your record. We're going to make you drag yourself to court and be all fucking obsequious and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like I promised to do better. I know I should have turned my wheels while that guy was smoking crack and fucking smashing windows and stealing shit out of everyone's car. But I promise I'm not going to turn my wheels next time. I'm so sorry. You're honored. You're right. I am a failure. I do have white privilege. I'm so sorry for existing. Like, I really am a criminal. I'm the worst of the worst. You know, society would be better off if I wasn't here. But like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to try not to breathe and take up too much oxygen. I'll wear two masks and I'll just sort of sit in the corner and I won't ever be, you know, misogynistic. I won't be a guy. I won't be have any masculine energy. I'll just kind of sit here. I'm so sorry. Um, That's what they want you to be like. It's a fucking joke. So every, everywhere I go from now on, I'm going to fucking park my car. I'm never going to turn the wheels. How about that? I'm never going to turn the wheels. Play this shit in court, your honor. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to turn the wheels. <laughs> Cut 12 months later. Like I'm like in court and like don't have a driver's license because I didn't fucking turn my wheels. <laughs> like, you know, and it's scary. It's even scary being a person that speaks today. Like we have no fucking free speech left whatsoever, in my opinion. You know, they say we have free speech. Well, you have free speech. You just don't have a uh, consequence-free speech. Like, your speech has consequences. Like, oh, yeah, okay, so if I say one thing you don't agree with, then the logical consequences that I should get totally excommunicated from society have no job, and anyone that is associated with you will be emailed by the mob and by journalists, like the Dave Portnoy thing right now, and uh, have you canceled and take away all your sponsors and all your advertisers. Um, that's just a natural consequence for me disagreeing with you. You you have, you have free speech. It's just consequences for saying that you have a different opinion than me what the fuck is that that's not free speech that's fucking full-blown fascism um and so it's scary these days having any opinion even making these jokes even just joking about shit like you're liable to just get absolutely you know uh, destroyed by the mob if they decide that they just don't like you for whatever reason so um yeah everyone donate to my gofundme for my legal expenses for having an opinion before anything even happens i'm just preemptively doing a gofundme but then gofundme will cancel you if you have an opinion so you can't even raise money on gofundme because they'll fucking cancel you. It's like, you know, we really don't have free speech. We don't whatsoever. Um, you know, you have to tow a line. Even with this podcast, I'm towing a line. If I hang out with my friends, I'll be saying wild shit just for fun because it's funny. But you're not even allowed to be funny anymore. That's why no one's funny. So, yeah, at least I'm still good looking. You know, it's all good. Um, so, fucking chugging this water, guys. This is like an embarrassing episode. I'm just chugging water, but let me chug another bit because I'm really fucking dehydrated. Just pretend there's a sponsor right now. Just pretend there's something happening, you know, 10% off. Use my code, Daniel got hits. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Next up on the agenda. Well, I'll talk about Dave Portnoy. That's interesting. I really like what Dave Portnoy did. If you guys aren't aware, if people haven't seen the Dave Portnoy shit, basically, you know, he has done some, he has done some weird shit. Like I wouldn't say any of it is really bad or like really like evil or like malicious, but you know, he has said some dubious stuff and he has to sort of live through that. It's kind of on the internet. And, um, I mean, who am I to fucking judge anyone? I don't really judge him. I don't think he's a bad guy. He did a lot to help small businesses. 
um, during the pandemic. Wait, she did more than almost anyone to help small businesses during the pandemic. And, you know, I think he's a funny guy. I like that he's really, really rich and successful and he doesn't really shy away. A lot of people, when they get that rich, they would just be like, I'm getting the fuck off the internet. I don't want this drama. He kind of just thrives on it and he just fights back, which I find interesting. Um, but he found out that the Washington Post was going to run a hit piece on his festival. So I guess he has some sort of festival, Pizza Fest or some shit. I don't know what it's called. That not that like the, the weird conspiracy? Oh, it's Pizza Gate. Okay, Pizza Fest. Um, and so he basically is running this food festival, and I think it's coming up soon. And he got word that the Washington Post was basically just – some random scum journalist loser who makes like 20K a year was going around. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't mind this more than I make right now. Um, was going around <laughs> talking to sponsors and uh, basically asking them like the email was like, hey, how does it feel? Uh, don't you feel weird like spot? advertising um at dave portnoy's like food festival seeing as he's such a racist misogynistic bigot and like all these problems that he causes and it's like you know just stirring up shit for no reason all these things all these allegations he had they're like in the past he's already addressed them multiple times it's kind of blown over and they just keep coming at it they keep coming at it no one's even talking about anything and they're just like prodding and poking trying to find a way to cancel him um and that's where they that's what they do these people the the woke mob they're very smart they come after whoever they think that is controlling your sponsorships or your advertisements luckily a lot of sponsors and advertisers these days they know it's all bullshit anyway they don't even care anymore it's kind of like lost its it's lost its appeal it's got no riz anymore it's just like oh yeah whatever bro cool like cool story go back to your basement but they came after some advertisers and sponsors he got word of it i guess through them and before the washington post could even put this hit piece out he called up the journalist that was sending these emails and he recorded it just like this he had the mic he had everything he's like yo what's up this is dave portnoy i'm recording this by the way um yo i found out you're like emailing people saying this and that like what the hell why are you saying that like why didn't you ask them, uh, why does it feel great to be associated with Dave Portnoy because he's raised money for small businesses and he's promoting your, your pizzeria? Like, why did you take that angle? It's clearly a hit piece. Why did you not come to me? Why did you not talk to me about it? Why are you going straight to my advertisers? And it's just a beautiful thing because that video went viral. It got like 10, 15 million views on Twitter. And, um, basically the journalist just looked like a clown. She had no real reason to as to why she was doing anything other than if she just admitted yeah i hate you and i want to like destroy your career and i'm trying to just write a hit piece on you and he really exposed what a lot of these journalists do and i've i've seen this from high high profile figures especially in tech and stuff journalists hate people that are actually creating innovative things like technology founders um you know anyone that's doing better than them in the media that gets more views is more relevant they really hate that it like boils their blood they just can't stand how irrelevant they're becoming so you see a lot of tech founders have written about this when they're going to write a hit piece on your company they're going to publish it at like 5 p.m and they'll email you at like 4 52 and they'll be like hey because they're technically as journalists they're supposed to give the person you know some time to sort of like refute any false claims in an article before it goes out so they can say no i i, I emailed it to him and you know they didn't reply so we just ran the piece they didn't reply it's not my fault it's like yeah but you gave them six and a half minutes on a Friday night at like 6 p.m. to reply. So they didn't see the email. You know, it's so shady. So he basically got out in front of it, confronted them, and he fucking controlled the narrative then because it's on his stream and he's posting it on his Twitter. So he just totally flipped the t flipped the script on them. I found it very entertaining, very good. And then he basically said, okay, you want to talk to me about it? Um, let's do it at this time. We could talk at 10 a.m. on Thursday. And then they canceled. They're like, no, we actually don't want to talk to you anymore. It's all bullshit. They don't ever want to get you uh, to have a chance to refute any allegations, which is you know, just indicative of the way they work. But I found it so cool how he kind of exposed them on that. This episode is brought to you by myself because I don't have any sponsors yet. So if you want to sponsor this shit, hit me up. Um, that was pretty cool. You know, yeah, Portnoy, Fed says no recession until 2027. Awesome, awesome. Um, I have an interesting topic down here that I wanted to talk about. And uh, it's, it's pretty, it's a random one, but kind of like why I prefer at this, I kind of think I prefer living in an apartment than a house. Um, I know this is that's the worst segue I've ever seen. It's just like talking about Dave Portnoy, and it's like I, I prefer living in apartments. I need, to pro, I need to get a writer to write better segues. Um, but you know, basically, I was living in a house uh, for the last while, about a year and a half, 
And, you know, me and my girl, we moved kind of closer back to LA and we decided to move to an apartment. Okay. And it kind of seems weird. Like everything that you're told in life is like, there's this like formula, this narrative that is what you're supposed to follow. And it's like, you know, you rent, then you do this, then you buy a house. Or even if you don't buy it, you like rent a house. You're supposed to move from apartment to house. That's like the logical conclusion. And like, you know, that's just better. A house is better. You got more space. And it's like, I thought that too, until I lived in one. And then I was like, you know what? And people are going to come at you for this because I'm not saying this is better for everyone. I'm just saying I prefer apartments at this specific window in my life. I probably, I'm sure I will want a big, huge, awesome house when I have kids and everything, but just for right now, like as a single, you know, young guy, or maybe as a single couple, like the house is just so much work, dude. Like people don't tell you how much work's going to be. Um, you know, you're going to have to, if there's any grass or flowers or plants or anything around, you're going to have to have gardeners or you're going to have to do gardening yourself. You know, every week you're going to have to remember what day the trash pickup is, roll all the trash and recycling down, roll it back up to your house. Like there's going to be random shit that goes wrong. Uh, there's going to be like a leak in the roof. There's going to be all this random shit where if it's in an apartment, you just call someone and they have like a maintenance guy on call. If you live in a house, more than likely you're renting it from a actual person, just like a landlord, um, who maybe that's just like a house that they own, but they don't have like a maintenance guy on call because if you live in an apartment, they, the property managers have like 300 units, 400 units, uh, you know, they're going to have a maintenance guy. They're going to have a plumber. They're going to have this, they're going to have that. And I just realized in the house when I was renting it, the landlord was like, yo, every Friday there's going to be gardeners that come because they need to take care of the garden and they need to make sure the grass doesn't overgrow. They need to trim the trees, all the shit. I was like, sure, no problem. I, that actually sounds really bougie. I have, gar- you know, the gardeners are going to come, the gardeners, you know, because I'm successful and I have gardeners. So the gardeners are going to come. Why did that sound like Trump? Um, the gardeners, the gardeners are going to come because, you know, I'm a successful guy. You know, a lot of people, they don't give me that credit, but I'm really successful, frankly. Um, so <laughs> the, the gardeners would come every Friday. And at first it was like, okay, that's chill. But Pretty soon after a while, I started dreading Fridays. I was like, I'd wake up on a Friday and like, I'd be like, fuck, dude, there's gonna be three dudes, you know, just walking around the house with the leaf blower and they're gonna be gardening, doing their thing. It's like, God bless them, they're doing their job, but it almost felt weird on a variety of way in a variety of ways. It's like, first off, I'm an able-bodied young man. It's like they're kind of looking at me like through the window, like it's like so awkward. It's like, what's up? And it's like you know, it's just weird. It's like, oh, this guy thinks he's so good. Like he doesn't have to do any work. We're out here fucking slaving away, you know, under the sun, like three Latino dudes, you know, my mom's from South America, like, but you know, to them, I'm just like some fucking stuck up, you know, rich kid who just lives in a a house. Maybe that, you know, they don't even know if I fucking had to work for it. Might've just had this house given to me by like daddy's money or whatever. Right. So which isn't the case at all, but it's just kind of how it makes you feel. I don't like having this feeling of people sort of, you know, um, people working like on my behalf when it's not really me that's like hiring them, but it's like, you know, having people fuss over you type thing. You know, it's even at a restaurant. I don't like it when the waiter keeps coming over. Like, are you okay? Is everything okay? I kind of just like to be left alone and do my thing. So having all these people in your house. So first off, there was that element of, I just didn't like how it felt weird that it's like I'm above someone because they're like working in my garden. I, I don't know. It's weird. It's old school. That's, that's not how it is. I'm sure they didn't think that one time. They're just doing their job and they're just doing what they got to do. But I don't like that feeling of having like workers or like staff at my house. Right. Second of all, um, and it wasn't like some huge house. It was a small house, but it was like, like 1600 square foot house. Right. Which gets me to my, uh, a further point. But first another point, which is that, um, you got that. And I just don't like people at my house. I realized I don't like people at my house that I don't know. Maybe I'm paranoid. You know, I don't know. Shit is weird these days. My girl's in the house. And you know, if I am somewhere else and my girl's just in the house and you got these three gardeners, like, I don't know who anyone is. I don't, I've never met these guys. Like I'm sure they're great once again, but I just don't like it. I don't like, um, I feel like an invasion of privacy having anyone at my house. I don't like people that knocking on my door. That's another one. When you live in an apartment, you don't have anyone knocking on your door. Like, sure, like some weird circumstance, maybe like maintenance or the building, someone might knock on your door like once in a blue moon. But, you know, unless you live like right next to the front door of the building, like on the first floor or something, uh, you know, if you live up 
on the second floor, third, fourth, fifth, like anywhere above the first floor, no one's going to knock on your door ever. No one's ever going to bother you. No one's ever going to be outside your window, like random neighbors walking by and they're like looking in nosily and shit like that. I don't know. It just was overrated for me. I just like an apartment. It's more privacy. It's more secure. No one can knock on your door. There was some weird motherfuckers every now and then knocking on the door. I remember at Christmas one time, uh, around Christmas, some random ass dude knocked on the door and he just like looked like drunk and high and shit. And he's just like, yo, what's, what's up, man? Like, um, yo, I'm just like, uh, you know, asking for donations for like this thing or like the, my daughter's like fucking this club or that club at school. I'm just like, yo, who the fuck is this dude, bro? Like I hated the fact that a random, the random weirdo essentially could just knock on my door and I kind of have to answer because they saw that you're inside because it's on street level and they could just see that there's people in the house. Um, you know, you got, I had to have ring cameras. I had a couple cameras around the house and it was like, I don't even have anything valuable or like important to protect. I just, it's kind of like paranoia. It's like, okay, I want to make sure I can see what's going on and shit. You know, if it's dark out and, um, apartment, you don't need any of that. You don't need shit in an apartment. It's just safer, more secure as society becomes kind of weirder. It's just like, there's no weirdos going to be knocking on your door and shit. Um, and trying to sell you stuff, even if they're not weird, it's just people trying to sell you stuff. People knock on the door, like real estate agents trying to cold, cold, you know, cold approach. Um, people dropping little shit in your door, like, you know, flyers and promotional stuff. So you don't get any of that. So I do like that more. And the last point I was going to make was I didn't even feel like I had that much more space. Like, the, you can find a nice apartment with 1,500 square feet, right? In LA, in New York, it's a bit harder. Certain cities, that's like quite a lot. But in LA, there is bigger apartments. You can find a 15 square foot apartment that's not going to absolutely break the bank. Um, so you kind of can live in an equal amount of space. And the, the only thing is you don't have a garden. But I realized I didn't even use the fucking garden anyway. So I don't know. It's a pretty long rant about, I just thought I would touch on that and sort of just bring that up. Because I feel like people don't really bring it up. But I did see Luke Belmar. I saw Luke Belmar bring that up um, and he's a pretty interesting dude. And I think he was saying the similar thing. He, he made a shit ton of money, moved to Puerto Rico. And all of a sudden he was like, damn, who are these people in my house? I need gardeners. I need a fucking cleaner. I need a chef. I need, I wasn't on that level, but um, I understand now what he means. And he, I think he was like, I just fucking left and went back to living in a, in a condo in an apartment. So, you know, don't be in a huge rush to move to a house. I think if you have kids, if you have a lot of kids or dogs or pets or whatever animals. Like I do think obviously it makes sense. And of course I'm going to want to move to a house eventually and you will get tired of renting. You know, I don't, I'm not in a rush to buy, but of course if I had like way more money, I would love to try to buy something. Um, cause it does get tiring having to rent and always be sort of like under the foot of someone else who can like, you know, dictate the terms and you just like always have, you, you're basically never building equity. You're just throwing money down the drain. Um, so I don't think it's like a no brainer that buying is always better, but I do, I don't, I'm also not one of these people that's like buying is stupid. Like you should never buy rent, rent, rent. Um, so I think that I definitely will get sick of renting and I do want to buy a house. Of course we all do. But as of right now, I'm chill. As of right now for the next couple of years, dude, I'd be so happy to just fucking chill in an apartment and just not have anyone bother me, dude. I swear I'm getting like, I'm turning into such a boomer. I just don't want people to bother me. I'm like my dad now. I literally am. My dad's like an Irish, you know, from the countryside in Ireland. And he's always been very like against any sort of like fancy shit. He's just like, you know what? I just want to be left alone, left in peace. I want to watch my football on the TV. I want to, you know, just like hang out with the fam and just be left alone. I don't want fucking politicians talking to me. I don't want people sending me fucking letters in the mail. Just leave me alone. And I'm like, the older I get, I'm literally, I'm like, you know what, pops, you know what, dad? I'm on the same exact page, bro. Just leave me out of the shit. Let me enjoy my life in peace. And um, yeah, so I don't know. Apartment's winning for now. Apartment's winning for now. And um, yeah, what, what else? What else I got going on? I got a flight next week. I'm going to Atlanta next week. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude. Right. So this reminded me about the flights and shit. Like, so I'm going to Atlanta next week. And like, every time you're at an airport recently in the last couple of years, it's like every time you go, the airport staff are basically asking you to do their job like more and more. So at first it was like, you know, the first thing was like, okay, look, um, just check in online, you know, just check in online on your phone. It's pretty easy or just on the website. And like, once you get to the airport, we'll still do everything. But just like, you know, if you could just check in online, please, and just help us out a little bit, just a quick little check in online, and then it'll be good. We'll do everything for that. You, you check in online, we'll take it from here, right? So that was the first step. It's like two weeks to slow spread, right? And it's fucking shit happens everywhere. 
after like two years of that, three years of that, they brainwashed us all, normalized us all, slow psyop. It's a slow psyop, like all of the best ones. And they're basically, now they're like, okay, check in online yourself. But then when you get to the airport, also like print your boarding pass yourself and print your baggage tag yourself, print the bag tag and then bring it over to the bag place. And then like, we'll put your tags on and everything. And then we'll send your bags off and you're good. And it's like, wait, all, so I, now I got to print all my shit. And now it's like, you got to print your shit and you got to put the fucking bag tags on your bag. It's like, are you guys going to do anything? What am I paying for? You got, want me to fucking fly the plane next? Like I'm literally paying so much. And like the flights just keep going up and up and up and up like a one way domestic flight in America, like LA to New York used to be like 250 bucks, 300, 400. Now it could be like 650, 700. If it's like a busy time, it's like, what the fuck, dude, you want me to fly the plane? You want me to get the little cart with the food and the drinks and like walk it down the plane, serve myself and like take everyone's payments and like serve all the passengers. Like they don't want to do anything. What are people getting paid for? You have one fucking job, which is to sit there and check people in. Now you don't even have to do that. And I'm not coming at the employees, but it's like, I hate when these airport employees give you attitude where it's like, you're like, Hey, excuse me. Um, and they're all so overstressed. It's like talking to a human form of like a human ball of cortisol. Like you ever talk to people at the, at the airport? Like you see like TSA, I, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but I, I think everyone at TSA has like astronomical blood pressure. Like if we measured the blood pressure of security people at an American airports, like you go in at 7 a.m. and their face is already like bright red and they're just like so fucking angry. They're just like, leave your bags next to fucking like conveyor belt. Don't fucking bring, if you got a laptop, take it out. That's right, sir. I'm talking to you. You fucking bitch. Take your laptop out. It's like, holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. Like, dude, it's like 6.20 a.m. and there's like eight people here. It's like, take your fucking laptops out. If I catch one of y'all not taking your laptop out, I'm going to take you to the side and slap you upside the fucking head. I better not see anyone with their laptop in the backpack. I'm going to make you fucking come back around and you'll see we're going to have a problem. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? So are you looking at me? Take your fucking laptop out of the bag. That's right. Take your shoes off. Yeah, you got the fucking clown shoes anyway, bro. What the fuck are those? What are you wearing? Take those fucking shoes off. It's like, holy shit, dude. Um... So if you got a water bottle, like you, I better not see anyone with a water bottle. It's like, man, where's the professionalism? They literally just like yell at you. It's like, geez, bro. Like <laughs> what the fuck? So, you know, everyone is asking you to do their jobs for them. The economy is so fucked that nobody does their job anymore. You go to the airport, you got to check yourself in. You got to print your bag tags. You got to put your fucking stickers on your bags. You got to do everything. You got to lift your bag onto the thing. You got to do every single thing. You go to the supermarket, you got to check yourself out. You, It's like, hello, there's like 10, you know, checkouts. Why is there only one person working? It's like, oh, just go to the fucking self-checkout so that you can check out with yourself on a camera, by the way. Why are they recording us? Why are you on a camera? Why is there a camera of your face? They're getting ready to turn us into China, bro, where you have to like get that facial recognition shit. I went to Whole Foods. I'm scanning my own shit because why would the employee do it if I could just do it, right? So why, why ask the fucking customers to, you know, why help the customers if you can just get them to do all their own work. So I'm doing all my own work, checking out all my shit. And my face is on the little screen right in front of me like this. And I'm just like, it's like filming me directly from here. It's like, bro, I don't give consent to Whole Foods to fucking film me. They're already starting to turn it into that fucking China credit score shit. Um, but you know, so you got to do that. What else? You go to the doctor. I went to the fucking doctor. I went to the dermatologist the other day. And uh, I had like this weird, had, like weird kind of like itchy thing on my scalp. So I went to the dermatologist um, and, you know, it's cool. But before the appointment, and this has happened recently, at any time I have to go to any sort of medical thing, they, they send you a text like, oh, what's your number, whatever. They send you a text and they're just like, please fill out all of these forms and all of this and all of that, like before you come to your appointment. And so all of a sudden you're scrambling at like, you know, eight in the morning on your way to an appointment. And you're basically, once again, doing their job for them. Like, why can't they print out all the forms nice and easy for you? You get there 10 minutes early and you sign all the forms and everything. I get it. It's kind of the same. You're going to have to do it anyway, but like you have to do it on text. But it's just like, I don't like doing little fucking annoying shit like that on my phone. Like, it's just annoying. It gives me anxiety. I'd rather just see a piece of paper. I get there 15 minutes early. Give me a bunch of boring pieces of paper. I can slowly just sign through and give it back to you. What's the problem? The problem is that then they need to go and they need to 
probably type that into a system, right? Whatever you wrote on the paper, someone else has to go type that into a system. And what? They don't want to do it. Guess what? They don't want to do it anymore. Why would I do that? The customer can just do everything. So it's like, dude, what else? Like, it's like if you fucking hire a hooker and then they're like, hey, I don't actually do anything. You're just going to have to jerk off over there and then let me know when you're done and then pay me. It's like, wait, what am I hiring you for? Like, or if you like, you know, you're going to get arrested and the cops like just throws you to handcuffs. Like, hey, just cuff yourself, bro. I'm too lazy. Just cuff yourself. Hey, are you cool? You got a car? Can you drive yourself down to the station? I'll meet you down there like for your arrest. Yeah, just drive yourself down to the station, cuff yourself, and then you know, I'll just meet you down there. It's like, is no one going to do their job anymore? Like, what the, what the fuck? Um, so, yeah. And then, you know, I, I don't know, bro. Everything's crazy. Let me take a sip. I got one last topic I want to rant about right here. Lemon water is so good. Lemon water is so good. Lemon water is so good. Mmm, yum. Lemon so good. I love lemons. I love lemons. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, last topic for today. They got rid of the fucking dress code for senators at the Senate or Congress or whatever. I don't even know the difference. I truly don't know the difference between Senate and Congress. Like, I truly don't know. I always make fun of those videos where it's like that, that guy in the street who asks people like, what's seven times four? And like, they don't know the right answer. But I don't even know what the difference is between the Senate, the House, the Congress, none of that shit. To me, they're all equally retarded and corrupt and I don't care about any of them. But anyway, they just got rid of the dress code in the House or the Senate or Congress or one of them or all of them because of this dude, John Fetterman. Is that even his first name? What's Fetterman's first name? John Fetterman. So this dude is, bro, let's be real. Like this guy has like brain damage. I think I don't want to be too harsh because I do think that he had like a stroke or something. Um, and since that his like brain function has been like, you know, even below like a normal politician brain function. But um, I don't know if like that's really the cause, but he's like, bro, he's out of it. He can barely form a sentence. Like he says the most insane shit that just makes absolutely no sense. He makes Joe Biden look like William Shakespeare when he talks. So that's, you know, that's a pretty uh, easy way of looking at it and sort of understanding where this guy's at. But he wears shorts and a t-shirt into the Senate every day. He wears a Carhartt hoodies, shorts, t-shirts and he's just fully out of it he looks about 50 60 oh how is it 55 and he's just this big ogre looking fucking dude and he's supposed to be like a working man's representative you know i'm a democrat but i'm with the working man i'm gonna wear my carhartt hoodie and my shorts and just not know how to speak a sentence that'll really fucking relate to everybody um, I'm a working man. I'm a working man. Working people don't know how to speak or dress or anything. Like it's like a caricature. It's like what you, it's like what a, you know, silver spoon elite person thinks that the working class American looks like, Oh, I guess they're just idiots and they walk around with Carhartt and like, they don't even have, they're slobs. Like they're not, we shouldn't ask them to dress nicely or wear pants. It's like, you know, and I'm dude, don't get me wrong. I'm team shorts all day. I wear shorts, especially now that I live in LA. I wear shorts 330 days of the year, like if not more. So I feel you, bro, but I don't work in the Senate. I'm not fucking representing America politically. Like if I was representing America politically, I'm not going to pull up with some fucking Napoli shorts, like some like, you know, AC Milan, like training shorts. Like I'll fucking wear a pair of pants if I'm literally getting paid six figures a year to be a politician representing constituents and voters. Is that a real word constituents? Like if I was doing that, I would put on a pair of pants. Like it's not that hard, bro. Like Jesus Christ. So anyway, instead of doing, you know, maybe the logical thing and saying, Maybe we should just ask this guy to wear pants. Like there's like hundreds of people working for the government every day. That, millions, I mean, for the direct House, Senate, you know, Congress. If In terms of the entire U.S. government, there's hundreds, what is like fucking tens of thousands. How many people, how many people work for the U.S. federal government? I'm sure it's way too many people. It's insane. 19 million people. 19 million people. In 2022, around 19.2 million people were working for state and local governments. Bro. First off, that's that needs to be cut by about 90%. Okay, these people don't do nothing. Okay, second off, those 19 million people, they all need to wear pants. Like, because what is a government worker? They're like, you know, someone that works at whatever agency and this agency and like the housing department and this and that. They all got to wear pants. Why can't this dude wear a fucking pair of pants, right? It's just one guy, one fucking mongoloid guy just like made them basically abolish the dress code rule. Senate ditches dress code as Fetterman 
and others choose casual clothes. That's already brainwashing by AP. AP needs to be fact-checked, bro. These people, very subtle. It's very subtle how they manipulate the news. Fetterman and others. Okay, who's the others? There is no others. I'm going to read this article right here. Schumer did not mention Fetterman in his statement. Boom, 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 boom. It doesn't, I'm reading the whole thing. Asked about the criticism, Fetterman feigned mock outrage. They're freaking out. I don't understand it. Like, aren't there more important things we should be working on right now instead of, you know, that I might be dressing like a slob? <laughs> it's like, bro, you literally just said it. Like, that is pretty important. Why should you be allowed to dress like a slob if you're working for the government? It's pretty funny. Um, when Fetterman reached the Senate, wait, when Fetterman reached the Senate floor, he still voted from the doorway. Baby steps, he told reporters as he got on the elevator to go back to his office. What the fuck is... What kind of weirdos are people fucking electing, by the way? Like, baby steps? Like, what is he talking about? Um, anyway, I don't know, dude. That's it's, it's literally ridiculous. But I actually think it's a good thing, right? So, you know, that's the classic thing when something fucked up happens and then the media says, no, 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 here's why that's a good thing, right? It's like, yeah, like... Um, you know, lockdowns may have actually caused uh, millions of children around America to have like stunted growth uh, mentally and physically and cause like a mental health epidemic amongst like all teenagers in the world. But here's why that's a good thing. You ever see those articles? So um, here's why that's a good thing, in my opinion, that the Senate is basically just abolishing the dress code because – the government is a joke, honestly, and I think that this might be a good thing. Here's actually a good thing um, that now they don't. Maybe they won't be seen as being that you know um, important or being having any sort of authority. It's like this: if they all just start wearing hoodies and shorts, it'll be more apparent how dumb the whole thing is. It's all just a fake thing. Uh, but if, if I wear a suit and I'm here in a pursuant to Article 213, uh, Senator, I'm here representing the constituents of uh, my state and blah, blah, blah. And I'm wearing my suit and tie. And yeah, I'm getting paid under the table by all these different corporations, but I'm wearing a suit and I'm very important and I'm working for the government. It's like, yeah, this shit is all bullshit. Maybe if they just all start wearing dumbass clothes, it will be more obvious that you know they're all a joke and that they don't really do shit. So maybe for that reason, it's not that much of a bad thing. And that's my thoughts on that. So 44 minutes, 45 minutes, I don't know how long I've been going. I think that's pretty solid for episode two. I'm cool with that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. I hope the audio is a little bit better. I'm still working out my schedule on this shit, like how long I'm, you know, how often I'm gonna drop these episodes. I do not want to burn out. So I might take it kind of easy. I might do one a week. I might do two a week if I'm feeling it. Not quite sure. It depends. Appreciate you guys. The first one got really good engagement on Twitter. Not really expecting that from every episode. Um, you know, I think that when you drop something new, people kind of like are, you know, they're going to comment, whoa, shit, that's cool, man. Congrats. On the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, this just becomes normal. They're not going to keep commenting or whatever. But I really do appreciate anyone that drops a comment on this shit. Um, you know, really appreciate all the feedback. I got some really good feedback on the first one. People seem to fucks with it. I'll keep doing it as long as people keep enjoying it. And that's pretty much it, man. Stay redacted. Peace.